Hey, it's Gabe here. I want to thank you personally for checking out our YouTube channel and I want to invite you to click the subscribe button so that each weekend's message will automatically show up in your feed so that you can check it out. With that being said, we want to jump into today's message. And uh, we are, I'm, I'm pumped today because we're beginning a brand new series that we're calling Simple Life. Come on, anybody want a simple life? <laughs> I think this, is, this series is applicable for everybody, and you can see uh, some statement <laughs> that maybe some of us need to make over our own lives is it was never meant to be this complicated. It was never meant to be this complicated. I believe that God has some, some things that he wants to teach us and show us in this series, and so we're going to be talking about how we can move from a complicated to a simple life in these four different areas, and we're going to get into those in just a moment, uh, specifically in four areas. And I've titled this message today, if you're taking notes or if you're on the Bible app, you can get the notes on there. The title of this message is Where Simple Starts. How many of you know if you want to, if you want to experience a simple life, if you want to make a shift, you've got to know where simple starts. And so today is kind of an introduction. We're kind of introducing this whole series that we're going to be in for several weeks together talking about these things. And maybe you're asking the question, you're like, you know, Gabe, how do I know if this series is for me? How do I know if this is really what I need to be hearing? And I jotted some things down that I believe if you've ever said things like this before, then this series is for you. Are you ready? Here, here they come. I, I think you're going to find yourself somewhere. Life is stressful. Anybody ever said that before? This is for you. <laughs> uh, life is busy. This is for you. Uh, I don't have enough time for the things that really matter. Come on, somebody. This, this series is for you. Uh, I feel financially stressed. I feel like I'm overcommitted. I wish my life would slow down. I wish I could make my life simple. If you've ever said anything like that, and I could probably spend 30 minutes going through a list of things that you have said over your life in the past that would, that would qualify this series as being for you. And so here's the truth about your life and my life today. It's this, and if you want to write this down, you can. It's that we were not created to have miserable and joyless lives. We were created to have abundant and joyful lives. You were not created... You are not on earth. You are not walking around today to have a miserable, joyless life. That was never God's intent for you. And I think somewhere there's this combination of the enemy and, and the part that he plays in that. But I think sometimes we have a part to play in that too. That we have complicated things that God made simple. And we're stressed out, overcommitted working ourselves to death, doing all of this stuff, wishing that, woo, can't wait. You ever said this before? Boy, I just can't wait until next week. I'm ready for this week to be over. And then you get into next week, and you didn't change anything in your life, and so by about Wednesday, you're like, I'm ready for this week to be over. And by the end of 2019, you've said that 52 times. <laughs> and then at the end of the year, you're like, I'm ready for this year to be over. Woo, new start, but here's, here's the thing. If you don't make a shift, then it doesn't change. Just because you go into a new day, a new week, a new month, a new year, it doesn't change anything if you don't change anything. And so I want to talk about where simple starts. And here's the reality. We have access to more information, more products, more research, and more ideas than at any point in history. You can get on your phone and get on Facebook, and, for, and somehow they know what you're looking for. You know what I'm talking about? You have gotten on, I have, you have gotten on and you have bought something on some website and now Facebook is recommending this website to you because you like clothes and they know that you like clothes and so here is a place where you can go and you can buy clothes and you can scroll through all the pictures. You know what I'm saying? We can, we, they know what we know before we even know it. <laughs> and we're scrolling through there we're like, you know, I did need to know that. I did need to know that that's where I can get new shoes is right here by going to this Facebook page or this website. We have access to more. If You know, our, our kids, it's so funny, but we'll, we'll be asking our kids a question. Or they'll ask a question, and we're like, you know, I don't really know. I don't know the answer to that, and I can't think of any example right now. But, you know, like, what, you know, what's this dinosaur called? And we're like, I don't know. And they're like, well, Google it. 
Or this is the new one that our, that our kids have started. Well, ask Siri. <laughs> ask Siri. Or they'll come ask for our phones so they can ask Siri because they know how to do that. We have access to more information than at any point in history. And these things can be good, but they also have a tendency to make life incredibly complex and complicated. Uh, it was interesting, I was sitting in a session this last week, and they were talking about how this generation that's coming up is actually starting to kind of get, they want real relationship and not the social media relationship that, that so many of us are used to now. And these things can be good, social media can be good, but it can also make your life complicated. It can, it can cause you to compare to what other people, come on, you're walking around comparing to what everybody else is doing, and everybody else is wearing, and all of these things, and it can make our lives incredibly complex. Um, here's how one lady that I, I read this statement this last week, how she worded how most of us feel each day. She said this, she said, I wish I knew how to have joy in my life. I'm just trying to survive each day. <laughs> I wish I knew how to have joy in my life because I just feel like I'm just trying to survive. Can, I just got to get through this day. If I can get home from work, everything will be, if I can just get to where the kids are in bed, if I can just get to where I can go to sleep and wake up the next day, maybe things will be different. And she said it perfectly how most of us feel a lot of the times. And we feel this way, but, but this is what Paul wrote down for us in, in a letter that, that we can read to the Philippians. And he said this in Philippians 4, chapter 4 and verse 4. He said, always be full of joy in the Lord. And then he repeats himself. I say it again, rejoice. Now, there are a lot of us that when you read that scripture, maybe you've read that at home before, or you've read it in a devotional, you read this devotional about, you know, having joy in your life and all these things, and you read that and you roll your eyes. <laughs> because you're like, how can I always be joyful? How can I always rejoice? How can I always, how can I live in this place where I'm enjoying life? And we may roll our eyes at this verse a lot of times or think, I don't even know how that's possible, but here's what I know about you and me. We want to enjoy life. I've never met anybody that said, you know, I just don't want to enjoy life. I just wish that, you know, I, I just wish that everything was more complicated. You know, I wish that somebody else would get upset with me on my job. I just wish that I could get in one more, one more conflict with somebody because I really don't want to enjoy life. <laughs> We don't go around saying these things. We want to enjoy life. And most of us, if we were completely honest, we would, we would even say this, I'm looking for a better life or a simple life. And we want it, we seek it, sometimes we pay for it. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we're trying to pay money to simplify life. We're trying to pay money to, to find a, a, a different solution. We're trying to pay money so that our life can be less complex and less complicated. We want to truly enjoy life. And so... The question is, what kind of life are we supposed to have? And if we were to ask Jesus about our lives, what would he say? And this is going to be our theme verse, really, for this entire series. And we're going to be going in different directions, and I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But this is our theme verse for the whole series, is John 10.10. 10, and I want to read it from the Passion Translation, because many of us have read this verse before. But I love the way the Passion Translation says it. It says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come, this is Jesus. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Here's what Jesus wants for you. He says, the reason I came is so that you can have life, full life, abundant life, that is overflowing out of you, that when people get around you, they're like, I don't know what it is, but it's just, oh, just, it just flowed out of them onto me. That's the kind of life that God wants you to have. It's this John 10.10 10 life. And I don't think there's anyone who would read that and say, you know, I really don't want everything in abundance. I really don't want more than I expect. I really don't want a life that overflows. We do want it. And so here's what I want to do with our time today as we kind of introduce this series and where we're going. Uh, I want to give you what I believe are the first three steps toward being able to experience this type of life, this full, abundant life that Jesus wants to give you. And so if we're going to take the, the first steps toward the simple life that, we're, that is our goal through this series, then uh, that we desire to have, we have to do three things, really, that I believe to start with. And here's number one, if you're taking notes. we got to remember who our example is. Sometimes the most simple thing is the most complicated thing and hardest thing for us to do. 
before you do anything else, you've got to remember who the example is. Remember who our example is. Too often we're so busy looking and comparing to what everyone else is doing and we forget that Jesus is the example to follow. (laughs) We're following everybody else and what they're doing and we forget that Jesus is actually the example that we're called to follow. We've forgotten who the exa- we've forgotten who the model is. We've forgotten what 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 the 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 picture is that we need to be looking at every single day, and we began to look at all of these other things and all of these other people as our example. You know, we we do things like this. Well, Johnny's playing soccer, so my son needs to play soccer. Their Instagram looks like they have so much fun traveling everywhere, and so we need to travel all the time. Well, our kids aren't going to be as well-rounded as their kids if we don't put them in all the multiple extracurricular activities. If we don't have something going on every night of the week, then our kids are not going to have, I mean, they're just not going to, they're going to miss out on something. It's just, oh, man, it's, it, it, it's, it's killing us. Well, they have a boat, so I want a boat. <laughs> all the people that have a boat said nothing. <laughs> Well, they have, they have that, so, so I want that. I saw a picture of it. I saw they posted about it. Oh, they just bought that. I want that thing. Well, they have a brand new truck, so I want a brand new truck. Well, they just got a new vehicle, so I want a Well, they just bought a new house, so I want a new house. And we're look, we have forgotten who the example is. And it's complicating. And see, you think that you're just going through your life and you're just, oh, you know, well, that'd be cool to have. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want this. And, and you're, you're buying all these things and you're getting all these things and you're doing all these things and you're not following the example that Jesus has set for you. You're not following after him. You're following after stuff or you're following after other people that have stuff that you want. And so now you're getting the stuff that they have because you want the stuff that they have. There's a whole other topic for another day. We've got to remember who our example is. If you want a simple life, if you want abundant life, if you want full life, if you want life that overflows, you got to start looking to Jesus as your example and not to the other people that are in your life that are around you. Not on social media. Comparing our life to someone else's life is a great way to make your life complex, distracted, busy, and miserable. You want to be miserable? Look and compare yourself to everybody else. Get on Facebook today, get on Instagram today, whatever it is that you use, and start looking at what everybody else is doing and how cool they looked when they went to church today, and then start feeling bad about yourself because you didn't have the cool outfit that they had to wear to church today, and so now you've got to go buy new clothes this week, and you've got to spend money that you don't have to try to get somewhere that, that you want to be, but when you get there, you don't like where you are anyway. And your life becomes miserable because you're comparing yourself to the, to, to the wrong example. You're looking to the wrong place. Instead of looking at what everyone else is doing or isn't doing, what if we look to Jesus? We may not be able to replicate all that Jesus did, but we can learn to pattern our lives after him. And his life was many things, but it was clearly simple. And we're going to talk more about this as we go through this and in the weeks to come. His life was a lot of things, but it was always simple. It was always purposeful. He kept his focus. He managed his time on what really mattered. He was on assignment, and he kept it simple. So we need to remember who our example is. Here's point number two, the second step. After we know who the example is, now we've got to clarify where we need to simplify Because we can talk about having a simple life, But a lot of us wouldn't even know where to start with that. A lot of us wouldn't even know, well, I want a simple life, but I don't even, I'm overwhelmed at the idea. My life just became more complicated because you told me that I needed to simplify it, and I don't know where to start. And so now I'm more stressed out than when I came to church, and you need to help me. (laughs) And I want to, this is out of, it was 1,000, there was a study, out of 1,077 individuals that were Christian and non-Christian and some that thought they were Christian but, you know, found out that maybe we're not following Jesus the way that we're supposed to, these people were surveyed and there were four areas where people truly needed simple. And I'm betting that everybody in this room needs simple in these four areas. And this is where we're going over the next, the next four weeks after this. We're going to talk about these individually so that we can kind of break them down and learn how we can get simple in these areas and we can have the life that God desires for us to have in these areas. But I'm going to give them to you and talk about them just briefly, and then we're going to move on today. Here's the first one, time. 
The first area, out of all these people that were surveyed, the first area that people needed simple was with their time. People want simple so they have time for areas in their lives that really matter. And I would be willing to bet if we were to go around the room today, you want simple in this area of your life because you want to spend your time doing what really matters. Sometimes we don't, our actions don't line up with what we really desire. And hopefully we're going to, you know, hopefully the, the, the word and, and God speaking to us is going to help us in these areas. But time is one area where I believe that we all want simple. We want to be spending our time on what actually really matters, what is really important. Here's the second area, it's relationships. People struggle with balance in relationships, and the simple life means having better and closer relationships with others. We have this. It's because God, de- God designed you to want relationship. He designed you to want community, to want to be around people, to want to have friends, to want to have people that you're close to. And what simplifying in this area does is it brings closer and more intimate and more meaningful relationships than what we have. See, a lot, of, a lot of us, we've complicated it in this area. And people in this study, and I believe that if we were to go around the room today, we would all agree that relationships is an area where, hey, I need, I need some help. I need to simplify in this area. I want to know what God says about this area so that I can have the relationships and the type of relationships that God actually desires for me to have. So we got time and relationships. Here's number three. The third area is money. Some of you are like, oh, we're going to talk about money. I'm skipping that week. (laughs) Out of all these people that were surveyed, one of the top four areas that people thought, you know what, I need to figure out how to simplify because my money is complicated. I pull up my bank account on my phone, and I start getting stressed immediately. <laughs> My money is complicated. And for some of us, we look at our bank account, we're like, I don't even know where it went. It's just gone. Just it just disappeared. Money. People desire a simple life free of past due bills, limited income deficient savings, and increasing debt. We don't like these things. But for some reason, we keep going in those directions. But it, I, I, think it's because that, I think it's because we don't, we don't understand how to simplify and what, what God says about that area of our life. And so it's one of the four that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about money. So everybody needs to show up on the week that we're talking about money, all right? <laughs> so we got time. Four areas that people truly need simple, need to simplify in time, relationships, money, and here's number four, God. God. Uh, People have a big void in their relationship with God because they're too busy for God. And we need a simpler life so that we can get closer to God. There there are a lot of us, and, and I'm not condemning you, this is for me as much as it's for you as we're going through this series. There are... We have complicated our lives so much, and we have so much going on that we are too busy for God. And it's not that we don't want to spend time with God, because we, I think that most of us believe, I need to spend time with God. I need to have God in my life. I need to be, I need to be in community. I need to be in, have a deeper faith. I need all of these things. But our life is so complicated, we don't even know where to fit it in. And we need simpler in our lives so that we can actually prioritize God as first, and 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 not have to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, some of us. This is just the honest truth, and I'm going to move on so you don't hate me too much today. But this is the honest truth that that a lot of us we're like, I would have to get up at four o'clock in the morning if I was going to spend time with God because I just have so much packed into my day that I I don't even know where I don't even know where to do it. I don't even know where to do it, and so time, relationships, money. And God, we're going to be talking about these things and how we can experience the life that, that, that Jesus said, I came to give you this type of life. And I came to give you this type of life in these four areas. And how do we get there? And so that's where we're going over the next few weeks. And I think we can all relate to one or maybe all four. So we have to have, uh, we have to know who our example is. We have to remember that Jesus is the example to follow. We have to have clarity for where we need to simplify. And here's number three. The third step is we have to embrace the solution. 
It's one thing to realize that you have a problem. It's another thing to actually embrace the solution to the problem. Are you with me? It's, it's one thing for, for, for you to know, okay, uh, in, in relationships in my life, there's, there's a disconnect here, and I need, to, I need to figure out what God says about this and how I, can, how I can have the life that Jesus wants me to have in this area. And then it's another thing to embrace what the solution is. And so here's what we're going to do as we go through this series. Uh, we're going to talk about each one of these four areas in our lives, and we're going to focus on four things each week that can bring us simplicity in that area. And I'm going to give these to you really quickly and kind of talk about them for just a moment so that you'll know each week where we're going and what they mean. But here's the first thing. It's clarity. Clarity means that you know where you're going. You have to know where you're going. Part of the solution is knowing where you're going. Look at the, come on, somebody look at your neighbor. Look them in the eye and tell them, you need to know where you're going. <laughs> If you want to, if you want to rhyme with it, you say, you say it like that. You need to be knowing where you're going. How do you plan on spending time on things that really matter? What is the plan for developing healthier relationships? How do you plan to get your finances in order? What is your plan for getting close to God? You got to have clarity. You got to know where you're going. Before you move closer to a simpler life, you need a blueprint of where you're going. And sometimes we just don't know where to turn because we haven't made a plan to go anywhere. And we need to make a plan. And hopefully over the next several weeks, we're going to make a plan on where we can go in these four areas so that we'll know where we're going. We'll know where we're going. Uh, How do you know if you need clarity in these four areas of your life? Well, maybe you've said some things like this that you can relate to. Well, I want to be able to spend time, more time with my child instead of working all the time and having him go to daycare. I would just love for the kids to get along and quit fighting so we can have some peace in this house. I want a job that will satisfy all of our financial needs without taking time away from our family time. We're constantly on the go due to our children's sporting events. I wish we could pay off all of our debt because it would remove a lot of stress. We all really need to be on the same page spiritually. These are just a few areas that I think we... We might need some clarity. We might need to know, okay, where are we going in this area of our life? So clarity. Here's the second thing in each area that we're going to be talking about is movement. After you get clarity, we're going to talk about movement. Uh, here's, what, here's what I know about me and about you and about this word called congestion. Congestion is rarely ever a good thing. Would you agree? When we hear the word congestion, we're like, mm, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Have you, ever, <laughs> have you ever heard anyone say, you know what I need? I need some good congestion. When I leave the house today, I just need some good congestion in my life. You know, when I wake up tomorrow, I just hope I have some good congestion. But we live with it. In a lot of areas of our lives, this congestion Congestion means to be blocked up or to be too full of something. So congestion in your sinuses, come on somebody, means you could have a headache or trouble breathing. Nobody wakes up and thinks, well, you know, I just hope to, I just, Lord, today, would you just give me some good congestion in my sinuses so I can walk around today with a headache and I cannot breathe. And a lot of us feel that way in our lives. We have a headache and we feel like we can't breathe. We're congested. Congestion in traffic means that you're not moving. We were just coming back from Dallas, and we were driving around about rush hour on Monday, and I thought, this is not for me. (laughs) I love to come here and do some things, but I want to go home. Because it's 515, and we ain't moving. We're just sitting here. Congestion in traffic means you're not moving anywhere. And here's what congestion in your life means. It means you're not making any progress. You're not making any progress. And we need some movement. We need some movement. If you don't know what to do, or if you know what to do, but you don't have movement, you aren't going anywhere. One great example of this, don't get offended at me. This is the best example I could come up with. But if you have a goal to lose 40 pounds, and you have to to begin moving and taking steps in the direction to reach your goal. If you have a goal here, this was, this was just a goal that, that I set at the beginning of the year to read so many books this year. If I don't start moving in that direction, I'm never going to get there. 
whatever your goal is, whatever, whenever you know what it is that God's called you to do and the direction you need to start moving, now you got to start moving in that direction. you got to start making some movement that way. Clarity is making a plan, and movement is acting on the plan. And in order to move towards your goal, you have to be two things, intentional and incremental. I love this saying, <laughs> if somebody ever asks you, how do you eat an elephant? Some of you feel like your life is just a big elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how do you fix some of these areas? How do, you, how do you move from complicated to simple one step at a time? One incremental step at a time. One intentional step at a time. Here's the third thing that we're going to be talking about. It's alignment. So in these four areas of our lives, this time and money and relationships and our relationship with God specifically, alignment. Um, Anybody ever had your car be out of alignment? We were driving to Colorado, and the car was out of alignment. And there's nothing that will frustrate you more than when you have to, you're trying to do something or get a drink or whatever, and you let go of the wheel for a minute, and you're like, you know. I mean, it's like this instant thing. You're driving. You're like, I need to get something. You look at me like, whoa, you know. And you're just hoping that if you're out of alignment, it's out of alignment to the right and not the left, and there's not a car coming whenever you look down for a moment, right? It was out of alignment. It was frustrating. And I thought, well, I need, this car needs to be aligned. <laughs> there needs to be an alignment, and some of us need an alignment. For many of us, our lives are out of alignment in these four areas of time, relationships, money, and God, and we can't put it off any longer. We need an alignment. We need an alignment. Uh, Getting out of alignment usually begins small, but it doesn't remain small. Have you ever noticed this? If you let your vehicle, because this is what I'll do. I'm just going to just confess it right here in church today. Is it'll be a little bit out of alignment. You know, you'll let go and it just kind of, you know, it's just kind of doing this thing right here, you know, and you can go quarter mile before you're off in the shoulder. Oh, it's not too bad. And about three weeks later. That's a little bit, the, the wind must be blowing really hard today because my car keeps wanting to go that way. It starts small, but eventually it becomes a big problem. <laughs> and eventually it'll actually cause damage to your tires. And now instead of paying $40 for an alignment, you're paying $600 for new tires because you didn't fix the alignment. Come on, somebody, are you with me today? <laughs> And we can't put it off. Some of us, we can't put it off anymore. We, 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 we need an alignment now so that we don't end up replacing four tires in three months. Are you with me? We need an alignment. Most people don't develop debt problems overnight. It starts small. Most Christians don't stop going to church suddenly. Well, we just suddenly decided we weren't going to go to church. No. It was, well, you know, we won't go today, and three weeks later, well, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, we're just busy today. Well, it, it happens over time. It's just these little small things that form habits in our lives. Most relationships don't fail over one incident. It's a bunch of small incidents that happen over and over and over that form a big problem. Most people don't become workaholics in one day. You know, I worked 12 hours today, and whoosh, workaholic all of a sudden. It doesn't happen. It's these, it's, these, it's these small little things that happen over time that eventually form a big problem in our lives. And we need an alignment. I want to bring the worship team back up today. And here's the fourth area that we're going to be talking about as we try to, to, to allow the Lord to maybe correct some things in our lives is focus. And what I was thinking about with focus is that sometimes we have to eliminate some good stuff. Sometimes to regain focus, it's not always eliminating bad things. Sometimes it's eliminating good things. Uh, I was reading this, <laughs> this, this story, and it was, it was about this guy. He was a pastor, and this is what his story was like. He said, can you, can you name anything that's bad in, in this person's life? He said, I was going to school which was taking about 15 hours a week. I was further my education. I was, I was trying to, to get more, you know, Bible college, trying to get more education, 15 hours a week. I was serving as a pastor of a small church, and I was given about 20 hours a week there. We weren't making enough money there, and so to supplement our income, I got another job because I want to take care of my family, and I was having to put in about 30 hours a week there. 
And, and, and he said, none of these things are bad. Going and furthering your education and, 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 and getting more knowledge and, and, and doing that thing, that's not a bad thing. Pastoring a church, it's not a bad thing. Getting another job because you want to, you know, I want to I provide for, it's not a bad thing. But sometimes when we get in alignment and we're trying to refocus on, on what really matters because we want, we want our time to be on what really matters, we want our money to be on what really matters, we want our relationships to be on what really matters, we want God to be in the, in the proper place in our lives, sometimes we might have to get rid of some good stuff. Some stuff that we're doing that's not necessary. Some stuff that we're doing that's not taking us in the direction that maybe God would want us to go because we're, we're overdoing things in our lives. Many problems may not result from people doing bad things. They may be a result of people doing too many things, even though none of them are bad by themselves. And this is what, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, I want to end with this and this example, and then we're going to pray together and, and worship together. This is what Paul writes. He says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. How many? One. I have one compelling focus. I forget all, that, all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. Paul had narrowed his focus down to one thing. To one thing. This is everything I do is taking me in this direction. Everything that I do in my life is going to take me in this direction because I know this is the direction that God has for my life and I'm going to focus. I was thinking about uh, iPhone. I don't know how many of you have an iPhone. I have an iPhone. Some of you have Android phones. But iPhone, the reason that I am so, uh, like everything Apple, is because I love how simple it is. <laughs> it's not complicated. It's simple. Everything about it is simple. It's all app-based. Get the app that you want. The app, you know, that's how you operate the entire phone. It's by, it's simple. That's why I like it. And this is what Steve Jobs, who is a founder of Apple, he said this. He said, I am as proud of the things that we have not done as I am of the things that we have done. Some of us feel really good about ourselves because we're doing a lot of things. But maybe we need to focus. Maybe we need to, we need an alignment. Maybe we need some clarity. Maybe we need to start moving in the direction that God has for us. Will you stand today? Focus may be the toughest step toward a simple life, but it is definitely necessary. Definitely necessary. And over the next several weeks, we're gonna be talking about how we can simplify our, our lives in these areas of time and relationships and money and God. And I truly believe that if you'll lean in to what God wants to show you, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. I believe God has a plan for your life. The question is, do you wanna follow the plan? Do you wanna follow the plan? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes today. If you're here, I just wanna pray for you and then we're gonna sing this song. I'll go ahead and bring our prayer team down. We'll have an opportunity for you to receive prayer if you need to come down for prayer today. But I just wanna ask you in this moment, if you know this is for you and you say, yes, I need, I, I need simpler in my life. Will you just throw your hand up right now so I can pray for you? God, you see every hand all over this room. Lord, you see all of us that uh, for whatever reason, maybe our life is complicated. Maybe we're doing too many things. Maybe we, we're doing the wrong things. Maybe we're not focused. Maybe we need an alignment in some areas of our lives. And you see every hand that has gone up that is just, just, just before you saying, you know what, I need your plan. I need what you have to say about these areas of my life. And so God, I pray that as we go through this series and we talk about these things, Lord, that our hearts would be open, that our minds would be open, that our ears would be open. Lord, that we would embrace the plan that you desire for our lives, the plan that you have laid out for us. And as we do that, I believe that our lives are gonna change, that we'll never be the same ever again. And God, we thank you for an opportunity right now to worship you one more time. And Lord, I pray that if there's anybody here today who needs prayer for any area of their life, Lord, that all pride would be gone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that if they need prayer for anything in their life, you would draw them for prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.